in the U.S., it's bare bones. You play the tournaments, no conditions. You pay everything, and you got to win big or, or else you lose money. Like, if you look at Harant Malkumian, he probably traveled from Armenia. He, he probably had to fly to the U.S. And when you add in that flight, he probably lost money, even though he finished in third and had a great tournament. If the, these players who finish in third to seventh could play from home, for example, they're making their prize fund. They're making 2100 bucks. They're not, they're not having to spend all this money on, on travel and food. So if you have more tournaments online, it is a good thing across the board. Um, but, but anyway, the point is this player played Tata Steel. So Tata Steel is a traditional tournament held in the Netherlands, um, in, in late, uh, in, in late January of 2000 uh, or late January, every single year, it was held this year in 2021 as well. Now I'm going to get rid of this and the player played in this event and they had a very bad event. They, they dropped about 28 points. It was a very rough event for them. And, um, and so they finished near the bottom of the prize near the bottom of this, of the table out of the 14 participants. Now in this event, um, they have prize money. Their first prize I think is, is $10,000. Second, second, uh, sponsors, uh, I'll talk about that separately. Second, second, I think was like 6,500. Third was like 5,000. It goes like four, three, but at the bottom, there's no money. So there are only, I believe the first five players get paid for the event. Now, the thing with Tata Steel um, is that they have a prize when it seems very, very low, but what they do have is what we call appearance feats. So, um, yes, yeah, so you can lose 28 points if you lose a lot of games. So, so basically what happened is, is, uh, this player, they had a very rough event. They lost a lot of ranking points and they finished, I think in like 12th or 13th place. And so they didn't make any prize money. However, players, they do get an appearance fee. And, um, based, based on my own experience from having played in the tournament, having some idea of the ranges, I'm just going to use an estimate that even though they finished near the bottom, they made a $10,000 appearance fee. And they played the German Bundesliga. They played three games. It was over a weekend. Now, one thing you have in Europe that you don't have in the, um, in the US per se is uh, you have what are leagues. So you have these weekend events where you play like three games sometimes, like the German Bundesliga, it's over seven weekends. You could play potentially 14 or 15 games with chess, uh, but they break it up. So this player, they, they, they were in Germany or in Europe, probably right after Tata Steel, and they played, played in the German Bundesliga and they played three games. Now my assumption for this, there is prize money at the very end, but, um, but it's, it, who really knows how much it is. And um, they played three games. So my assumption on this player who was about 2750 is that they played the German Bundesliga, they played it over Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three games individually, that they made $3,750 um, or approximately 1250 bucks per game. Again, those figures range. I know, for example, when players like Vish Vichy Anand or Magnus Carlsen play in some of these leagues, they can command up to $2,000 for playing a single game of chess. So um, so it varies widely, but I'm just going to use a 1250 figure um, that they that they uh, that they that they made. Um, uh, and now the other thing I would say about this player is that I think they started streaming yesterday or the day before. So I'm, I wish them nothing but luck. Um, you guys have already figured out who it is as well. So um, so so yeah, I just want to add that. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to assume they made 1250. They might have made less. So let's just go with 1250 as as an estimate. I don't know these figures for for a fact. Um, and now let's let's keep going. So next 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 event that this player played in was the Gashma Memorial, which is a tournament that is held in Shamkir. Azerbaijan in April. So they played in this Gashma, Gashma Memorial. And um, as you see, as I add in my notes, they had, a, they had a very rough tournament. They finished, I think, seventh or eighth out of nine players. So again, they finished near the bottom of the field. Um, and now for this term as well, I think they say the first prize is, um, is I believe 60,000 or $40,000. But again, there are no prizes at the bottom. So we assume that there are probably, um, Again, appearance fees that are that are involved where players get paid to plan the event. So I'm gonna assume it was, it was in it was in it was in Azerbaijan. They finished second to last. I'm gonna use a ten thousand estimate, even though I really have no I mean I really have no no good way to, to guess, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say they make 10k. But basically the way the FIDE Grand Prix works is it's a, it's a field of 16 players. So it's a knockout event, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Now the prizes for that, let me let me try try to remember. What the prizes were um let me pull this up uh so so yeah so the prizes for this the total prize one is one hundred thirty thousand dollars one hundred thirty thousand dollars um now now overall the winner of the event gets twenty four thousand uh, it's actually euros but anyway twenty four thousand to the winner fourteen thousand to second ten thousand for the two people who lose in the semifinals eight thousand for round two and five thousand for round one so getting getting back to getting back to the notepad uh, I'm just going to use dollars now because it's too much for the convert, too much for the conversion. But anyway, they they played the FIDE Grand Prix in Moscow. 
they played the event they played i think two or three days they lost in the very first round so it was it was two two or three days um and they made five thousand dollars so next up we have norway chess this was again april may they so this unnamed player played this norway chess event it's held in norway every single year um they do have they do have prizes as well so let me um let me let me pull this up as well so this player i think you can fit you obviously can figure it out now they played in the they p played in the paris grand chess tour and they finished in seventh plate they finished okay they <laughs> it's not me they finished in eighth place i guess technically um so I, I made a mistake with the ordering but any anyway uh, that was that was actually unintentional I finished in eighth place but as you see the bottom four prizes are all the same so for all these grand chester events you see the prizes are if you win it you make 30 uh 37,500 if you um if you finish in second it's 25,020 and so forth and it keeps going down bottom four prizes are always 7,500 dollars if it's a rapid event so now to, to give you guys also an idea to keep keep this really in mind because it's, it's important to note um which is that if you think about this amount of money seventy five hundred dollars if you played in this magnus carlson invitational which just just happened um and you and you say you you didn't make it out of the quarterfinals i believe the prize money that you got was five thousand dollars so if you lost without qualifying for the final eight you still made five thousand relative to seven thousand five hundred now keep in mind of course when you play over the board chess there there are obviously um there are obviously a lot of events where you um where you have to travel there their costs or food costs there are like hotel costs all kinds of other things extraneous things that that matter um so so it, it is worth noting that while it's a little bit higher versus online with all the all the lack of wear and tear it, it makes it makes a difference so next up we have the fide grand prix in riga now this player who i've already named they went on to win this event a huge victory for them um as i said before the prizes uh were uh 24,000 euros um for the winner 14,000 for second place and so on so this player won the whole event there they beat Maxim Vashilagrov in the final and they made thirty thousand dollars roughly so so again keep this in mind because like it, the the victories are the things that that um uh that really sort of that, that add up and this is why when when I talk about like this level of players if you don't win events you don't have any of these big caches very similar to poker um it makes makes a huge difference so let's keep going so let's let's keep going so next up is the grand chess tour in Croatia they finished again very rough event for them this one was a classical event mind you so um so so the prize money was different I'll change the graphic give me one second um let me pull this up okay here we go okay so this tournament was a very bad tournament for myself as well as you guys will notice I, I had a I had a very bad result there but uh, we're not talking about me at the moment so you'll notice that in this one instead of the bottom prize being seventy five hundred dollars it was ten thousand dollars because this was a classical tournament that ran over two total weeks um this is this probably by the way was the worst tournament that I've had in the last like I don't know like three years it was really really bad because a lot of people ask like how do pros make a living do they make a good living and like why is it like someone like um you know someone like Hans Neiman or you know Eric Hans or people like 25 2600 do they really make a good living or not so I'm trying to take it at the top tier I'll find 20 I have 2700 in mind and then then I'll just basically give you guys an, a rundown of opens and all these other things this player had, had a reason had a, had a pretty good year they made they made uh total was uh, one hundred seventy one thousand five hundred dollars roughly um so it's pretty good again keep in mind all these numbers are pre-tax so for example I like this Norway chess prize for example I know in Norway chess they always have they always have um is it, it, it I think it's at least 15 percent withholdings so already for Norway chess that's like there's a 15 percent withholdings um if you look at the uh Grand Chess Tour or the specific ones in St. Louis the U.S. as you know there's a 33 percent withholdings um for foreigners who do not who do not have green cards so there's like 33 percent that is I believe which which goes right out the door if I'm not mistaken um so so if, if I'm not mistaken I, someone can correct me on that but but this is this is just right this is just right off the top so you guys are like it's really really good right you, so you think it's like it's fan it's fantastic um but again at least at least 33 percent of this 23k is um is is withheld by the IRS first of all you have 50 percent withholdings in Norway um I also don't know what the taxes are in um in Azerbaijan but anyway uh that doesn't really matter but then beyond that you have to keep in mind there probably are expenses that you have you have expenses like um traveling you have to pay your trainers as well um you, you have you have you have food all these different things but now think about it this way imagine that you are now 2700 and you don't have the grand chess tour because a lot of this money is comprised from from playing like these grand chess tour events you have one two three you have um you have four 
and then you have the the parish gct that's one two okay so you have one two three four five five grand chess tour events for example that um that that are here that that basically um without those that takes off at least what's it take off 23k 30 uh 37 5 and then like um then then one more is it yeah then another 10k so it's like you're talking about 50k already right here from the grand chess tour um so if if you take if you if you don't get get invited to the grand chess tour already and that only applies to like the top 10 players in the world more or less then that takes a huge chunk out of what you would what you would um what you would make so so this is this is for a top level player this is for a player who's really right near the top and um doing incredibly well now i have another example as well this is a player who is who's not um who's not sort of the same same rating but they they had a very good run because they they won a, they won a couple of events um but i'm just going to use them as another example and, and they have a very different path they also make a very good living by the way but they have a very different path and i'm using the examples sort of of people who, who have done really really um really well and so you're going to remember there are players who probably do not have these victories in here and um and so, so that's kind of the reasoning all right so let's start with this player unnamed player number two they played in the gibraltar chess festival in 2019 now they finished in clear first including a victory against me they won they won a very nice game against me it was the first time i'd lost in gibraltar in like um i don't know like six or seven years it was very very unfortunate but anyway they won this so they won this they won first prize which is twenty five thousand pounds roughly translate GB, gbp into usd something like thirty four thousand six hundred roughly so i'm just going to mark this as as a victory because it because this matters too next event they played in was the world team championship where they represent the, the great country of russia um so what's the rating of this player i think at the time he was right around 27 he might have been 27 10 27 15 like 27 10 versus 27 50. um he represented russia in the world team championship again you represent your country there um there, there's a difference between the world team the european team championship and like the continental team championship so like there's the european team championship which is like all the european countries there's the um there's the uh there's a world team championship which is like china us everyone from around the world so i'm just gonna assume they played in they made ten thousand dollars just a, just a pure estimate next turn they played in european individual team championship where again much like gibraltar they, they tied for first place with uh, a certain certain countryman of mine by the name of Niels Grandilius and they they made $21,000 so this is two two victories next up they played the Russian team championship very similar to like the German Bundesliga or the French league or the Spanish and so forth um and in in that in that event uh they they I'm gonna assume they got paid a thousand bucks a game really no way to judge but just just an assumption that they made like they played nine games got paid 1,000 for a game so I'm just going to use a 9K estimate. That's just, that's just what I'm going to use, um, or $9,000. So next up, you have this tournament, the Karpov Poikovsky tournament, where they finished in first prize. They won this event as well. Again, no, no, no actual figures here um, in in terms of uh, in, in terms of like what the prize fund was. But I'm just going to use a 15K estimate. This is the third one which they where they won the event. So next up, there's the Danju Chess Tournament, where they, which was a six-player round robin held in China. Um, they finished in fourth place. I think first place was twenty thousand. Second was like ten thousand. I'm gonna assume the last like three or four players got like five thousand. I mean, it's it's not a, it's not about being paraded. I'm just giving an example for people. I'm just I'm just taking examples. It's not like it's not. There's there. This has nothing to do with trying to act like someone um, from from like making fun of people. That's not the point. And also, the, the, another reason I would say with Shaq that's important to note is that Shaq publicly has spoken about how hard it is to, to make a living from chess. Um, so, so that's that's the other other part that I would add as well. I mean, he, he gave interviews where he said that, where he he, he made comments about it. Um, so, I'm going to assume they made five thousand dollars here. Um, next up, we have the Russian Super Final in 2019, where this player shared fifth to ninth place again no actual numbers they I think that I think I saw something saying the prize one was like 65 6.5 million um rubles which was like eighty seven thousand five hundred dollars or something like that um so just an estimate that sh he shared fifth to ninth place I'm just gonna use a ten thousand estimate no no real no real way to um no real way to have any idea um uh next is uh the FIDE World Cup where they played and they lost in the third round they had a very difficult um I forget i think they lost to Luquang Liam in tie breaks if i remember correctly same event that, sh that the previous player played but they lost run one round earlier where so they made like 16,000 versus 25,000. 
Um, they played the Isle of Man Grand Swiss, and unfortunately, this player had a very rough event there. Uh, they, they finished well outside of the top 30 players, and, and so they made no money, which in essence means that in this event, they lost money. Uh, when you add in like the, the food and probably the, the transportation, all these little things. That's not to say it's like a lot, but it's still probably, it's probably a net negative. Um, so, and then after that, the only other tournament that they played in was at the end of the year, like everybody, the FIDE World Rapid and Blitz. Now, and they had actually a really good event. In the, uh, in the FIDE World Rapid, they tied for second. So in this tie for second was myself, this player, and Ali Reza Farouja. The winner was Magnus Carlsen, who won clear first. Um, and, and so they, they had, they, this was Cha-Ching. Nice event, they, they finished really high in this, this event. And um, they, they made, they, they made $40,000 roughly. And then, then there was also the Blitz event where this player, this player finished in six in a tie for six to twentieth place, and they made eighty two hundred. Also quite good, actually. It's pretty amazing when you look at this. It, it's actually I think a few less events, but it's really just like maximizing. Like this, this, this is like a huge, huge victory here. This one is good. This is big. This is big. Um, so this, it's really impressive the way that they performed. I mean, winning, winning, basically winning these three events and finishing right, right near the top. So very, very impressive result. I think this one, I think, I think I did this math earlier. It comes out to like, you know, 168k. So these are players who are being very, very successful. This, like, especially in this case, they won, they performed and won some big, uh, won some big events here. Um, so these are, these are, this is like the 2750, the 2700, um, and, and so forth. And, and you see, it's really, really good. Now, what I would say is that you take, take this example. Now let's go down the list and say there are players who are like 2660 or 2680 even. Um, I'm not going to say like Niels, which is someone in that rating range. Uh, I don't have stats for this, but if you're in, in this rating range, what happens is most of these events are not available to you. So for example, if we look at the, at this, this event, um, well, let's look at, let's look first up here. So the FIDE Grand Prix was available only to players who are over 2,700 level. So, um, so players like 2680 probably is not playing the FIDE Grand Prix cycle, which if we look here, it comes out to one, um, two, and there should be a third, there should be a third event. I don't know if they didn't play the third event or maybe I missed it. Um, but that's three events right there that's missing. Um, and then if you look at the Grand Chess Tour, this is one, two, three, four, five that's five events so already without the grand chess tour and without the fide grand prix um it's very very difficult and so someone who's like someone who's like in the range of like 2600 2700 ish they are they're not going to end up in any of these tournaments because they're invite only events so already you're talking about um you're talking about a situation where players are in that level have to play a lot of open tournaments so now i'm going to say basically if you're anywhere from the range of 2500 to 2700 level what are your options in terms of events that you can play in? Mostly it's going to be limited to either either um, either club tournaments or it's going to be limited to, um, uh, not club tournaments, sorry, teams where you play like in these leagues, where you play like in Spain or in France or in Germany or in Russia. Um, Russia is a little bit harder harder to play. And I know players like Eric Hansen, for example, he played in Spain. So the prizes are first prize is, is 30,000 pounds. Second prize is 20,000. Third is 15. Fourth is 10. Fifth is eight. Sixth is six. Seventh is four. 8 is 3, 9th is 2, and 10th is 1,000. So again, at the very top, it looks very good. This is the final rankings of Gibraltar in, 20, um, in 2020. Years don't really matter that much. Um, but if you look at the results, you think those prizes are really great, right? You see 30, you see 20, you see 15. Now, think about this result. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 people tie for first place. So you have seven people tying for first place. So now if I pull this back up, this is the first seven prizes, right? So you, you end up with 93,000 pounds divided by seven. So they all do very well. They make, um, you make probably, I don't know, like 16, 17,000 US dollars. Very, very good result. But now if you think about all these guys who finish in this next level, let me turn off the graphic. This next level, all these people who finish on seven, there, there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 players who finish one half point out of first prize. And these players, um, I don't know how much money they make, but I'm betting it's less than $1,000. It's just my guess based on the prizes. Um, so all these players have an amazing result. They score seven points. Um, some of them I'm sure outperform, have great events. They finish one half point out of first prize and they make less than $1,000. So it's, um, it's very, very rough. And it's half a point. 
one half point, you know, is the difference between like uh, making like $16,000 and making like $1,000. And so when people see these big prizes at the top, it's like, oh, well, you know, you can win and do very well. But in many cases, there are situations where you end up with big ties, so the money gets chopped up in many different ways. Well, this is why what I would say is, again, with chess, I think this argument is this is why you need more sponsors, because because there's a situation where uh, where, where basically I think there's a lot of money up top and it's, it's very good, but you don't, you don't have enough sponsors, you don't have enough tournaments. And this is also why I think as chess becomes more popular, especially with online interest, there are more opportunities. It's not just limited to the absolute top players. It's the same for tennis. I mean, I'm sure tennis is, is it's, it's pretty rough there too. But so Aeroflot has multiple tournaments, but they have tournament A where the ratings are 2549 or better. Again, 2550 level. Um, and you see the first prize for the uh, for the Aeroflot Open is eighteen thousand dollars. Second is ten. Third is seven thousand. And what you have here, it's a little bit, it's a little bit better. You have six and a half here. You have four people who tie for first. So they, they probably split split. Um, how much do they split? They split eighteen, ten, twenty eight plus seven, thirty five. They split thirty nine thousand four ways. Pretty good. Nearly ten thousand each um, for these top four players. Very good result. Actually, I didn't even know, notice that Aravin, the Indian junior, finishes up here in fourth place, which is uh, which is which is pretty amazing. Um, very good result for him. And then you see there are a lot of players. Basically, the next one, two, three, four, five, six players. They take the rest of the money. Again, I don't think it's that much. Um, they take what seven three thousand seventeen hundred times five. So it's what eleven thousand five hundred divided by six. So it's it's a little over two thousand roughly that you're looking at. If you if again you finish one half point out of first place. So very, very rough. And, and remember, there are only so many open tournaments every single year that you can play in. Um, so, so here again, if you, if you like, if you have a bad game or, you know, you, even if you outperform, for example, and you finish half point out, you make like $2,000. And again, for some of these terms, there are entry fees as well. So it's not always just a free entry, free, free hotel room that they, that they cover. So this one, you see, th these are the prizes for, uh, for, for the, for the, um, for the Dubai Open. You see, first prize, $13,000, quite nice. Second place, seven, third, fifth, four, thirty-five, twenty-five hundred. And again, you look at the prizes. So what, what, what happens here, you guys? L l yet again, we have a big tie. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players on seven points. So now if you, if you presume that seven players um, who, who all tie, that's the first seven places. That's the, the players made like 3,000 roughly, $3,000 for having uh, having a tie. Do they cut up the trophy into seven pieces too? Very funny, you guys, very, very funny. Um, no, they, they don't do that. Of course, of course they don't do that. So um, so basically, again, you see a situation with an open term. They probably have some tie break. Maybe there's a little bit of extra money, but you're looking at $3,000 potentially. If you have a great result, you tie for first place. When you look at this field, by the way, look at this, let me, let me close this again, because this doesn't even do justice. When you look at this field of, um, of the players, look at these players. You have Matt Lakov, right around 2,700. Amazing player. I've played him many times. Laquan Lam, definitely a top-notch player. 27-11. Kuzubov, Itur Zaga, Sanal. I mean, these are all these are all very, very strong players, uh, and I've played most of them. And um, and they, they make around three thousand dollars. So it's it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty rough. Um, and again, it's another open tournament where you have a great tournament, finish finish in, in, in a tie for first place, and you make $3,000. I've played Alexander Indigic on chess.com quite a few times as well. Keep in mind that when you win one of these tournaments, you're not going to win every single time. So if you win one of these tournaments, it's, it's, it's like 5K, but most likely you're not going to win every single time. Um, top place barely breaks even. Well, also, I don't know what the conditions would be for this event. There might be some some extra money doled out for like airfare or food. They might give like a stipend perhaps. But regardless, the point is that, you know, th this term, these players have great results. Matt Lakov, especially like longtime trainer of, I think, Savidler and maybe he's worked with Dubov also. But I mean, someone who's very, very strong. I played him many times and it's still maybe $5,000. And these are players who are extremely good, extremely good. So, okay, so so next up you have like the Sharjah Masters. This will be the last one that I show. Um, so you, you, ha you have you have the Sharjah, Shar Sharjah Masters. And again, what do we have here? It's it's not too different. You have one, two, three, four, five, seven guys tie for first place again. So seven players tie for first place. And you'll you'll notice also, oh wow, Ali Reza. I didn't notice Ali Reza. Ali Reza also also tied for uh, first place here. Nice result for him. Um, so you have like, you, you, have, you have a seven way tie. Same kind of thing as, 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 as I think I said before. It's a seven way tie. So that is how much is it? That's uh, 25,000 plus 13,000 plus 12,000. And then you chop it up by seven. 
and the players make seven thousand dollars pretty 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 good seven thousand dollars for playing this tournament's nine rounds roughly we can roughly like two weeks or thereabouts um and they make like little over seven thousand dollars not bad um again though the point the point that i would make when, when you look when you look at when you look at this though is that um you see this these there probably are more more events that that that, that exist but at any rate, the, the events that I saw for 2019 for open tournaments were like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven open tournaments. So if you're like 2550, if you're like 2550 or thereabouts, uh, these are your tournaments. This is your your goal of where you're playing. You can maybe play a league like let's just say the Spanish team. Well, let me give you a best scenario. Let's say you play the Spanish team championship, the French team championship. Um, let's say even the uh, German Bundesliga let's 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 go with those three for now there additionally there's like polish czech you know there 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 i think are a couple others there's a russian obviously although russian one is almost exclusively uh russians um but basically you end up in this so let's just assume you're 25 50 you probably can make i'm going to say 500 per game let's just assume you play nine games i'm just going to use nine some, some are longer but i'll just use this as, as as basic math um and let's say you play nine games in, in each of these leagues you'll make 500 x9 uh, or, or you know you make 4500 each and let's let's just use a best case scenario Let, let's say you play every single one you play every single one and um and you make like 500 500 that's like that's what 4500 that's 9k that's uh wait that's that's uh 40 that's 9k plus 9 18 18 plus 45 that's 225 i believe so it's 22,500 roughly that you can make from from playing in like playing in the uh playing in the, in, in, the, in the five leagues as an example so you, you make like twenty two thousand five hundred. that's 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 it's it's not nothing but let's just say you make twenty two thousand five hundred, for example yeah i know my formatting is terrible um don't they get extra for placement um not not sure not not sure how that works but let's just assume you know that you make twenty two thousand five hundred um from leagues let's say you play every league you play nine games and you make this um now when you look at these tournaments as as i've highlighted with with most of these events if you don't finish right at the top you're going to probably make like finish half point out or one point out of first place you're probably going to make like you know one to two thousand dollars let's let's assume you do well let's say you average at times let's say you play five of these opens that's uh, an additional ten thousand dollars that comes out to um thirty two thousand five hundred dollars and that's excluding a that excludes taxes b that excludes food and travel and everything else so at the end of the day if you're like 25 50 and you you have like everything goes your way like you get to play a lot of tournaments and and you even get to play leagues you're still talking like or sorry it's too far off the page now but you're talking you're talking like roughly like 32,500. so when people people ask like you know and th this is like if you're in america for example you literally can't do it because all these tournaments are abroad but basically what happens is you you end up in a situation for like hans where he's trying to be in stay in europe so he has a chance to play little open tournaments here and there play maybe play maybe a league or something and the cost is much lower as well so um that's like a large part of why hans is in europe but even here even if things are really really good i mean you would need to have probably high a tie for first and like at least like two or three of these tournaments to come close to making like 80 70 80 thousand dollars a year and it's very very difficult um so it's it's pretty it's pretty tricky to to put it mildly from england to gibraltar yes well the costs are much lower within um with within europe obviously but um i just want i just want to make that point so that that's why there are there sponsorships for top level players i think there are um for players in this like 25 50 to 26 50 range there aren't and this is also why to give you an example i'm i'm so very happy um for Crickhor that he's that he has this that he has that he's been able to stream become successful there are a lot of Brazilians who love his stream and he makes a living for streaming he has the sponsorship deal with Furia because um at the end of the day someone like Crickhor who's 25 50 very strong player you see like you see his talent he has a very good understanding of the game but if he tried to play tournaments and make a living it's just not realistic it's not possible um and, and so that's why like when when people wonder like you know about Hans or these other people it's very difficult and this is also why the last point i'm going to make about this is that you need to have support from parents and that's why when you seek when you see the players who are young becoming strong they're becoming strong because like all these costs that you think about like traveling food 
if you're like 13 14 years old you're just playing the chess game it's your parents who are who are supporting you and paying these costs so like you can solely focus on chess whereas when you're like 18 19 20 you have to worry about um you have to worry about you know how, how am i buying food i have to buy this airline ticket you know i have to train ticket i have to use a credit card like it's not it's not trivial so that's why a lot of times of players you know who are really talented they get to some if they become an adult um and you don't necessarily have parents supporting you in that kind of way it's very very hard to keep progressing because the real life issues start start mattering i mean having to find a place to live having to worry about food travel all these things like you don't just get to play chess and focus only on chess so it, it is really important um can you can you make money from being signed by an esports organization or is that work a sponsorship yeah well like india is a, a perfect example of where like in the country of india i think almost all the players over 2600 they're sponsored by like state oil companies or um or telecom companies tech all sorts of different things and that is that is simply because of, of vishy anand who became the world chess champion and transformed the interest in chess in that country and that's why i would say like for, for vishy um to me he ranks really really highly in my book because of what he what he's done besides being a great chess player is he's he's raised the prospects for all these other all these other players in india where they have these opportunities that don't really occur in in most other countries so so that's why yeah for, for to me vishy is is right up there at the very top um how good is the u.s sponsorship well in the u.s you have you have some tournaments that are um that 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 are uh that, that that have good prizes but again it's in the u.s to be clear you might have a tournament like let, let me see if i can find the world open this is where it gets tricky so this is the u.s so this is the world open which was held in um in 2019 it's like july 2nd to 7th basically there are a couple sections whatever it doesn't really matter the thing that matters is the prize fund so you see the prize fund. you see 2010 525 so let so this is the prize fund um for the world open now again i think in the u.s open there was actually or in the u.s or in the world open there was actually a clear winner if i'm not mistaken um you basically have two players at the top who take home all the money laquang lee laquang Liam, and jeffrey jean tie for first place they they both make fifteen thousand five hundred dollar extra bonus for laquang because he won the tiebreak right so uh so so not not so crazy laquang makes 15 five jeffrey makes 15. nice but again look at all these players one two three four five players who finish in third to seventh place and they make 21 20. now there are two things that, that i will say about u.s terms that make it much different the first thing is that there are no conditions you pay your hotel you pay your airfare you pay your stipend you do not get any conditions from the organizer unlike in europe um you don't get any conditions so the players who finish in third to seventh most likely lost money in this tournament they most likely made they probably lost money like if you look at harant malkumian he probably traveled from Armenia. He, he probably had to fly to the U.S. And when you add in that flight, he probably lost money, even though he finished in third and had a great tournament. Explain conditions in Europe. Sometimes they, um, sometimes you get hotel covered. Sometimes they give you a stipend for travel. But in this case, in the U.S., it's bare bones. You play the tournaments, no conditions. You pay everything, and you got to win big, or, or else you lose money. Which is another reason why someone like Hans Niemann has gone to Europe to, to play in Europe because the, the costs are cheaper. There also are some conditions as well. Um, but it's it's pretty insane when you think about that you you know you have a great tournament you score seven points out of nine you finish in tie for third to seventh place and you um you lose money and then yeah eighth to tenth 257 dollars for all these gms look at christian bauer travels from france to play the world open probably 257 dollars probably loses money o almost for sure he loses money here um so it's it's very very difficult uh you know in, in u.s tournaments very very difficult even harder than in european events but yeah so anyway thought i would just show you show this to you guys um because try, try, trying trying to get, give some examples of, of why it's so hard to make a living and why also psychologically if you're like 25 50 2600 um you know if, if you have a bad tournament like say say you play open turns in the u.s you play like two or three of these you finish i don't know if you have a good good solid result you get six and a half points and you finish like one point out of first place um and you have like two tournaments which are good but like this and you lose money then in the back of your mind you're, it's not just about chess anymore you're worried that like i'm losing money every tournament um yeah so it's uh aren't there just too many gms maybe but what i would also add as well is that when i look at this field and i see these players like these players in like this 2650 to, to like 27 range all these players if there are more online tournaments and there are more tournaments in general that and there are more sponsors that means there are going to be more opportunities across the board it's not solely going to be tournaments at the top because right now as you see it um like there there's this top event the magnus carlson invitational or this champions tour but players like artemia players like um 
let's say Duda or Roddick Wojtaszczyk just to use some Polish examples they don't get invitations so if you have say another separate event as well and then you have on and then you also have over the board tournaments you 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 have many more opportunities opening up across the board and then it can start then it can start um start start spilling over everywhere so that, that's why to me the notion of all these people who are like no it's terrible this whole online boom nothing's going to happen from it I think that's a very bad attitude to have because the only way that you're you're gonna have chess rise and promise the only way you're gonna have people pursuing the game more and more um is if you have more tournaments so so that's why i actually um that's that's why i have a big issue with it and then secondly think about think about a tournament like the world open not the world open specifically but like um you know some event that's held online if the, these players who finish in third to seventh could play from home for example they're making their prize fund they're making 2100 bucks they're not they're not having to spend all this money on on travel and food so if you have more turns online it is a good thing across the board and that's what that's why that's why i think it's very short-sighted when you hear from like fide and, and you know you hear from certain people who are like no it's terrible we want things to go back to the way they were i mean that should never be the goal it should not be about the absolute top players it should be about trying to have more opportunities for people across the board and that that's why it really bothers me that um that there's so many people within within FIDE who are basically like no you know it doesn't it doesn't matter let's just let's just kill this thing before before it becomes becomes something real yeah I think I think I'm gonna end there with um with this little bit of of it but I hope this was enjoyable for you guys I hope you guys uh you know got some stuff out of it um and and again like just to have some idea of how rough it really is